webinar is now live. Okay, looks like yeah, custom live streaming. So it looks like we're in all the places. Okay. Okay, I got the little thing that says she's on. All right. Awesome. Success. All right. So let's see what I can do. Oh, Talisha's in the room, in the waiting room. Oh. Yes, she is. Okay. Wow, I didn't even see that. I'll let you know when Eric pops in as well. Okay, wonderful. Hello there. Hello, hello. How are you? Why? Oh, I see it says I'm here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you are there. We are live. Hello, okay. everyone. <laughs> All right, everybody is in the house. All right, let me make sure I put that over there. And this may be Eric that just popped in on the screen. Let's see. Let's see. Eric, I love that that picture of Sheree. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is cute. All right, so let me see. Let's see how you guys are able to see all over the place. Please, for some reason you lose me. It just started. Okay. Whatever. I'm not gonna try to do all of that because I Yeah, I can we can let, let Talisha and I try to, to get okay. into the different groups and see if we can field questions and then. All right, that sounds great, great, great. All right, I'll just wait till it is six on the dot. We got Chris in the Everyone house. doing Joe. well out there. Let's see, just watching everybody show up. And Hopefully the rain has finally gone away where everybody lives. I know it was raining here like nonstop over the last few days. Oh, yeah. Now it's beautiful and sunny. Likewise over warm. here. Temperature is nice too as it was like 97, 98. Yeah, the rain cooled it off some. So it was like only like I think like 82 or 83. So even though it was sunny, it was bearable. Perfect. Mm -hmm. perfect, perfect. 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 Right. Chris says, how you doing? We are doing well. Oh, I see you're typing. All right, just a few more. One more minute and we will start promptly so we don't take up all the time. Hi, Hi Jen. Jen. from Detroit. Hello, hey, <laughs> I'm from Detroit Dr. Keisha too. stopping around. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, my cat is crying. Hey, there's I look at you guys holding it down with the black. Oh yeah, I got black my squad key. goals on. Oh, squad <laughs> goals, okay. It's, uh, what I had to represent, I had to be a Koye <laughs> from Black Panther for my child. Uh oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, I shaved my head and did the whole thing. She was, oh. she was sharing, and I took all my hair off. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah, you don't play, okay. <laughs> that's what we do, so I did it. Yes, yes. Oh, cat, no. You're starting to show up. No. Oh, no. you know the cat's our mascot. Come on. I say, he could just have a conversation. Yeah, he's got to make his Meow in there. But he's really vocal right now, meowing and meowing. He wants to talk. He knows we're, we're here. I guess. He wants anyway. to say hi to us. Eric, Eric is having a problem. Just log out and log Eric? back in, Eric. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I, am I all right, man? Oh, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Just change your name and you'll be good. Yep. And you're right Ooh, on time. I hate. Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to get your system together because I know what's the problem with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's drop. Talisha's driving me crazy. I know. We're going to get you together. Yeah, we, we are live. We are live, guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm acting right. I'm acting right. Not on day one day Zoom. Yeah, guys. So. I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna get it together. Give me a minute. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're live, guys. Hey, um, 10K family. As you know, it is Monday night when we do our live, where we come to you with our ask, ask us anything kind of um, presentation, where we let you know a little bit about who we are and what we're about. And you have an opportunity to ask your questions because we are 100% transparent. Um, 
Everybody want to introduce themselves as the co-founders of the 10K Project? I'll start with myself. I'm Dr. Keisha Waddell. I am the Chief Instructional Officer of the 10K Project. Um, pretty much the working with our uh, professionals in our ecosystem to create our knowledge center that we'll have for both the investors as well as the entrepreneurs. Um, we're looking at a lot of great content and we'll cover some of the topics that, that you can expect in that space. And in the coming months, uh, probably what is that towards the, what is that third quarter of the year? Um, maybe that maybe it might even be fourth quarter, maybe third, third quarter of the year is when we're looking to launch our uh, knowledge centers. So I'm, we're excited about that. Anybody else wanna go next? I'll jump in real quick, Eric Spence. Uh, Chief Business Development Officer here at the 10K Project, Lieber, passionately in Black business, Black entrepreneurship, and its ability to really um, level up our community. And I'm just here, you know, looking for those great businesses, business ideas that uh, I believe our community has always generated from. And now it's about time for all of us from the investing side and the entrepreneurship side to truly benefit from this ecosystem. I am Tawana Rivers, the Chief Operating Officer responsible for day-to-day -day operations and compliance oversight. And, you know, I just want to see our people succeed. You know, I, I feel like the 10K Project is going to allow um, a lot of people to experience financial freedom from an investor standpoint, as well as from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And I'm just so excited to be among a wonderful group of people, you know, helping other people. And I am Talisha Schein. I'm the chief technical officer here. I always say the function of technology is wonderful, but it, our focus is people. So when we can merge that and leverage technology to do what we need to do as a people, we will all succeed. Indeed. You know, on our channel here, it, this really is our time, guys. You know, all things black is so hot right now, and we have been black forever, right? So it's time to get on <laughs> the <laughs> So let's, let's make it work, family. <laughs> and we have a platform that we want to tell you a little bit about to uh, bring that about. Um, one of the big things that we seem to get a lot of questions about is what is equity crowdfunding, you know, and how can it build the Black community? So we'll answer that question with a quick um, presentation here. So if you, I'll direct your attention to the screen. Um, let's see right here. All right, is everybody able to see that screen there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All is well, showing well. All right, again, this is our, our essential question for the evening of what is equity crowdfunding and how can it build the Black community? Uh, during this presentation, you'll learn what equity crowdfunding is, uh, how, it is a benefit, how it benefits um, the entrepreneur, and what are its tangible benefits for the community, you know, when we participate in funding Black businesses. Um, oh, this cat. Um, as we well know, you know, in light of COVID and, and everything like that, and even prior to COVID, you know, any business needs money to start and to grow. And certainly when we're talking about our Black businesses, um, there are many ways that, you know, companies can start receiving uh, this funding. One such way might be from private investors who you know, make the lion's share of the, of the business's profit. And if you're familiar with um, one of the most famous shows, you know, the uh, Shark Tank show, um, these folks here are America's most famous private investors. Um, but going for, further, they're more than uh, 300,000 private investors nationwide. And when we're talking about our business though, there are two major problems um, that we face as black businesses. One being that uh, at least we're, we're basically uh, least likely to be funded. That's one of our big major problems. And by the time we find out about opportunities, you know, it's too late for we, the people. And the majority of the profits are, have already been made. Um, so what if we could earn these profits 
and uh, these returns and, and share the profits from these early investment opportunities. Well, thanks to the internet and the Jobs Act of 2012, Black entrepreneurs have another opportunity to get the money they need from regular folks like us, the crowd we're known as, okay? Um, so to get in a little more in, as to how crowd equity crowdfunding works, um, basically entrepreneurs work with a equity crowdfunding portal to raise money like ourselves, the 10K project. Um, those companies can raise up to a million a million seven seventy thousand dollars and uh, then also in this process of being on the crowdfunding portal investors can review a, a business's plan in terms of uh, this uh, their their look at the business plan rather in their terms of agreement research their company also known as due diligence and uh, receive equity crown uh, equity ownership rather in the company uh, if they choose to invest in that company. And again, that's that equity crowdfunding means that you actually are getting ownership into the company that you're investing in. Now, if the company makes a bid, then the crowd shares in the profit. If not, the investor only loses what he or she puts into the company, okay? And you do have those options on both sides. It's not a, we don't we don't have a crystal ball to really know what's going to happen, but certainly we are leaning towards success no matter what. Um, but do keep in mind that certainly we can't we can't you know guarantee what happens with it. But moving on, equity crowdfunding is government re, uh, regulated. It requires the SEC and FINRA approval, which is what we are seeking for our, our portal at this time. Some of the intangible benefits that we'll receive as a community is that we're expecting for this investment experience to be a family affair. You know, grandparents can uh, leave generational wealth, children can participate early and learn uh, investing and entrepreneurship. Our kids can really see you know, positive examples of black excellence and can follow an entrepreneurial path from startup to its massive growth. And we'll have a part of that in this platform. Another intangible benefit is that properly funded companies hire people within its communities. And because this portal is specific to black businesses, we're looking for our community to be benefited. And certainly the benefit, the business itself will have a much better chance of growth. An additional benefit would be that we'll be uplifting our young people and celebrating their ingenuity. And that is going to be tremendous. I'm an educator personally, and that's going to be a tremendous benefit um, to all of us. We all care about our children and they are our future. So there we go. That's going to be a huge benefit. So how are we gonna accomplish this? We are doing that through the 10K project, which is what we call ourselves. We are a community where black investors can fund black businesses for as little as $100. Um, basically, uh, oh, great. Oh, this is the Amber Alert, sorry guys. What's going on? A uh, lot going on in the world, Amber Alert, sorry about that. Um, I guess I shouldn't act like that. That's somebody's child, right? Somebody's baby. So yeah, hopefully we can get that taken care of. Uh, but anyway, again, back to our, our presentation though, essentially our uh, founder, Cherie Warwick has been saying, you know, when 10,000 of us put $100 each into a business, we can raise a million dollars and fund our own companies. You know, we can profit from our own innovation. We can create jobs and close the wealth gap. So here we are, the 10K project. And it works like this. You have, we'll have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have investor education. Um, we have investors, we have entrepreneurs. We'll be having um, bet on black pitches is what we'll call it, as opposed to like the Shark Tank pitches, we'll call ours bet on black pitches, where you'll, where you'll have an opportunity as investors to, um, evaluate a company uh, based on their merit and based on uh, the due diligence and 
um, interaction that you want to have with that company to, you know, make make your decision about whether you want to invest in them. And then certainly the entrepreneurs can expect that they'll have uh, business support after funding, which makes us entirely unique in terms of our platform. Again, we like to call ourselves the home of the everyday VC, and you are that everyday VC or everyday venture capitalist. So what does membership um, get you? Uh, basically, it's a seat at the table. So think about that, that pitch situation. Uh, not everybody's in the room, but those who have membership will be at the table. It'll be at the table for the actual uh, entrepreneurs that come before them with their uh, innovative ideas. You also have firsthand direct um, access to our financial literacy education and an opportunity, like I said, to hear all the pitches and invest on those deals um, in the platform. Oh, the cat's laying on everything. <laughs> nice. Nice. And that's how he's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right hang on let me get back live here what in the world click there we go okay <laughs> so anyway the membership certainly again gets you the seat at the table and it gets you there with a one-time payment of one hundred dollars and again that one hundred dollars is your lifetime membership fee one-time payment that gets you at that table all right um, in terms of that membership education, though, uh, the part that's very dear to my heart and what makes our platform entirely unique is that uh, the membership, will in, membership education will include, um, you know, information about your personal finances, you know, as an investor, you know, making more money, saving more money, reducing debt, repairing taxes, uh, reducing tax, repairing credit rather, and reducing taxes. Uh, developing money savvy kids, starting family banks, best practices for analyzing deals on our platform, uh, building a strong investment portfolio, uh, creating and preserving family wealth, group economics 2.0, and much, much more. Um, also, some of our big deal upcoming milestones uh, we want to share with you is that we have a membership and membership only, members only, I'm sorry, members only area open. Uh, and our investor education has already begun. So that's that the different conversations that we've had here in our, um, our uh, Facebook Live space uh, and the videos and the information that you see here. So all of that is part of that investor education. Some of the tremendous uh, pieces of uh, content that Alicia shares, all of that is included in your education. Um, further though, on into the summer and fall of 2020, we have our uh, publicity tour that's going on, that again is bringing us before, um, uh, you know, people in the community that are really doing big things and able to share some really good information with us. So we're sharing that with you. And going on to the future here, the 22nd of October, we'll be looking to open our Investor Knowledge Center. And the 27th, the Business Owner's Guide will be released. And that will be for the founders and the entrepreneurs. And that will show up on our uh, crowdfunding platform. Um, and by spring 2021, we are expecting our FINRA and SEC approval. And that will be when investments will begin. So one of the things we like to make sure we, we spend time on though on these Monday um, calls though is to answer some of the frequent, really, uh, question, frequently asked questions. We have a few that are showing up here. Some people ask us oft about you know how we prevent fraud. Well quite frankly you know there is a bunch of due diligence that goes on before we even open up our portal on one level that, that has to do with the portal itself. And then certainly going fur further, there's the um, background checks that happen for the actual businesses. Any of you ever, any of you other founders wanna share anything in specific to what kinds of ways we prevent fraud in answering that first FAQ? Yeah, so I'll jump in there. You know, um, 
you know, as Dr. Keisha said, the SEC has its own set of requirements for an entrepreneur uh, in order for them to be deemed eligible to come on to our crowdfunding portal or platform. And then we do something in addition to that, right, to make sure they are a viable business. You know, the goal is that uh, the businesses that we bring onto the portal will be profitable. While we can't guarantee that and we will not ever guarantee any level of ROI, you know, we are going to do our part up front to make sure they're a viable business, they're scalable, um, you know, they, they um, solve a problem or there's a demand of some sort for whatever product or services they have. And we're gonna look at that closely before we present them to you guys. Um, with that being said, there's a level of due diligence you also have to do for yourself, right? Because we can only do what we could do. Um, you know, so, so as an investor myself, you know, I get recommendations from people all the time. And while they sound amazing, I still go out, and I owe it to myself to still go out and do some level of research on my own. Right. So I, I research the service, how many competitors they may have. I research the product. You know, do they already have sales? Like those kind of things I do myself as an investor before I take the advice of a recommendation. And we recommend you do those same things. You know, in the trainings that Dr. Keisha talked about, we're going to teach you. Um, there'll be courses available to teach you how to do some of that. The other thing I want to, to kind of talk about a little bit is. You know, when this question is always asked, it's always asked in the frame of, you know, um, when will I get my money, right? And that's really what this boils down to is, you know, how can we prevent fraud so that I can get paid? And what I want to make sure we're clear about is there's a difference between fraud and the failure of a business, right? Those are, there's another reason why you may not get a payout but it's two completely different reasons. And every time a company fails, it's not as a result of fraud. Sometimes the market changes on them. You know, we think of the, the COVID situation that we're in now and how many businesses were not able to pivot, were not able to pivot into something else because the market just completely changed on them. You know, some of those community-based in-person businesses Mm -hmm. virtually closed, right? Because we have to social distance and all of those things. And so you can't social distance and be an in-person community business. The, the two just don't go together these days. And so, you know, some businesses just won't make it, right? And it, well, they won't make it as a result of fraud. They just won't make it as a result of maybe the business structure or the market or the world around them. So we need to know the difference. Uh, and we're going to know the difference because as investors, we're going to do our homework, right? We're going to do our own homework in addition to what the SEC does, in addition to what the 10K project does. Um, but, you know, I, the, the, the honest answer is even with all of that work that we're all doing, right? We're all taking that responsibility. It is very possible for some joker to get through, right? <laughs> it's possible, right? It happens, it happens all the time. You hear on the news about people who were duped and all of that other stuff. And so I just say to all of us, and that's to, to us as a 10K project and to you guys as the community, we have to do our homework. We commit to do it on our side, right? right. You have to make sure you do it as well because people are going to come on and they're going to be dynamic, right? But we need to make sure there's substance behind the words and there's a real business model that can survive the, the test of time mm -hmm. behind the message. Can I add to that too? Because what's so going to be so awesome about our community too? Because we have a vested uh, vested interest in our community. Because this is, as you know, we're we're focusing on black owned businesses. And like uh, Tawana was saying, you know, some of us may let's say some of us um, invest in maybe a couple of the same. Um, businesses, but maybe we're that person like a Talisha who's always checking the news and stuff like that and finding the latest, greatest stuff. We can have those conversations around like, hey, you know, are, are you aware that so-and-so, so-and-so is happening in the market? And, you know, in your uh, dialogue back and forth with the company um, that you have invested in, you can have those conversations. Maybe that's something they miss because their head is down. So working on their business, so or whatever that, wow, you've been a huge help because you really are a owner. You're, you're, you're in ownership 
relationship with that business. So it would behoove you to continue to help the, the uh, community out. And I would love to see that kind of exchange happen in you know, our particular um, uh, platform. That would be just tremendous. But um, anyway, let's, let's go on to with some more of these questions here. I, I think you, well, no, the second one talks about how, you, how we actually get our money out of the investments. And that's from three different things that can happen, right? That would be if the business um, goes public and it actually um, is, has an, it becomes, becomes an uh, IPO, basically. Um, the other thing is that they could be, uh, they could be a, a company that gives out dividends. Um, they can also be a uh, company that is just, um, is it just, just acquired, mm -hmm. just Somebody acquired entirely. Yep. Okay. Just bought out entirely where, you know, you, you big time make your money right along with the, uh, the uh, owner who's, who's selling their, their business. So acquired. Uh, we hear about that all the time. So here's your opportunity, you know, you know, that this kind of thing, you know, you hear about all the time, but how nice would it be to be a part of that? Not to say some of us haven't already, because again, we have every type of investor in our ecosystem. You know, maybe you've already experienced that. And again, I'd love to hear those conversations too. What's that like? Let's talk about that inside of our community here. That would be great to hear. Um, but then, Dr. Keisha, before you go to the next yeah. one, yeah. The, the other thing about getting our money, we're playing the long game here, right? This is not about getting your money tomorrow. You know, the way investments work is that there is a time period upon which that that business has to grow and earn a profit. You know, we're talking about, you know, startups for the most part. Um, you know, they, they need this funding in order to really get into the business model and make it successful. You know, some of them need manufacturing. Some of them need a manufacturing plant. Right. If I've learned anything from the magnificent Vanessa Braxton, you have to own your own stuff. Right. And so there are many entrepreneurs that are going to want a whole manufacturing plant that takes time. Right. You can't buy a plant and, and, and find people to you know, work in the plant and get all the materials you need overnight. Like that's not an overnight thing. I don't believe it is anyway. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like it should be. <laughs> Sounds like there should be some blood, sweat and tears into that that much work. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes time to build a business, right? Especially to build an empire. And that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that these businesses that come on this platform have empire building mentality mm -hmm. so that the investors can make a profit, right? And so this is not a one, two year turnaround. This is more like a seven to 10 year turnaround. So this is the long game. It's not a, you know, I invest tomorrow and I'm going to call you in 30 days and say, okay, when do I get a dividend check? That's not how this works. And so coming into the crowdfunding or equity crowdfunding space, you know, it's our job to educate you on how it all works um, with as much transparency as possible. We don't want, while we want to build this community, we want, we don't want to build the community with um, falsehoods or, or un, unrealistic expectations, right? So if you're interested in a quick turnaround of a buck, this probably isn't the place for you to do that. Still may be a great place for you to learn, right? And join us and get our education and, and, and learn how it all works about financial freedom and financial literacy. But maybe the investment part of this is not for you if you're looking for a quick turnaround on your money. But if you're looking to play the long game, this is the place to do it because most of the time, when investments are made and businesses blow up, you've heard that term unicorn companies, right? They turn out to be billion dollar companies and then they, they go on IPO as Dr. Keisha mentioned. By the time they get to IPO status, the early investors have already made a killing, right? The big, big money is already paid out to somebody. And that somebody is often never us, never that everyday person like us. And so what we're trying to do here is allow you to have access to those early businesses, right? Invest in them early enough that when they become the billion dollar company, guess what? Now you're the early investor that gets the lion's share of that profit. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Last question here. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, Aaron. 
No, no, I just want to add one just one point, you know, the uh just adding to what Tawana just said when she talked about those companies that once they go public, once they go IPO, you know, for all of us, we're all blockchain folks, you know, blockchain crypto junkies. And just this past weekend, or this past week, we saw that the news came out that potentially, you know, I always see these sort of things and I go, okay, stop. It's, it's going to happen. But potentially that um, Coinbase is going to go public. Um, let me just tell you, those investors that were early in Coinbase, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. goodness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Happy day for them. Happy oh, day. Oh my goodness, Ooh. yes. Yes, they're, they're going to make a killing when that happens. Um, yep. and, I, and I just think about those sort of things of just, um, it, it, it does pay to be early. And to be patient too, in this. So that's the big thing. Yeah. 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 And you and you mentioned something too, Tawana, when you were talking about the benefit of the the education. This is transferable information. I'm telling you, um, you could be in this and then you know not avail yourself to the information, but you could be in it, avail yourself to the information, and absolutely be able to apply it to so many different investment types. This is just one investment vehicle, one type. Um, so yeah, this is really gonna be that kind of information that, you know, it, it's that knowledge information where there's no receipt back on this. You know, once you get this and you work it, it's, it's gonna pay you for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't, you know, we can't say from an investment standpoint, right? We're talking about investment in equity in a company, what mm -hmm. the ROI can be. But I'm here to tell you that the return on your investment with paying a hundred dollars membership and getting the education that we have lined up for you, that's a no brainer, right? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm in those meetings. I'm here to tell you the vast amount of information we're putting into that knowledge center is a million times more than that hundred dollars. I mean, like we keep True. adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff and, and we're meeting such amazing partners, okay. educational, financial literacy partners that want to work with us and just give to this community. And if they were selling these things, we'd have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for some of this information, guys. And your community is standing in the wings waiting to just give free education to you because that's what this is. It's an ecosystem, it's a community. It's one person lifting up another person so that we can lift up another person and so on and so on and so on. And, and to see the partners that we have, we're meeting people for the first time and we're telling them about their project, about this project, yeah. and they are throwing free education at us. Like, please put this course, use this course. Oh, mm -hmm. we should tell them about this and do this for the children, do this for the this. I mean, we, it, 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 it's just amazing. And it truly warms mm -hmm. my heart to see that so many people believe in this and want to help each other because they understand that when one of us succeeds, we all succeed. Yes, yes. You know, and Eric brings up a point a lot of times about how we do things differently. You know, we don't have that ideology of, uh, you know, just once, just me and mine. You know, we, we come from a people that is a collective, we're a collective thinking people. And that's what a lot of times, uh, the you know, those, the enemy out there, you know, against us tries to break up because that's our nature is to come together and be you know, to collaborate and work together in terms of our uh, economics. So here we are again, here we are. So again, that, that next question talks about, um, you know, is there an equity crowdfunding platform for black entrepreneurs and investors? I probably want you to put in the chat who it is. <laughs> who is it? The 10K <laughs> project, baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The one and only. So all that's left at this juncture is to say to you, hey, please join us. <laughs> please join us. Uh, and the way to do so is to become, you can become a founding member um, by uh, certainly joining us here on Facebook and Instagram. Not just join us, but like follow us like us, you know, do all that stuff. We need all those numbers. All that kind of stuff helps too in this digital marketing space. Um, also share, you know, share the 10K project. If this is resonating with you on any level for the babies, for the education, for the idea of economic empowerment for the future generations, or even somebody who you're like, I know somebody might do it, maybe not me or whatever. 
pass it on to somebody who you feel can uh, pick this up. And, and better yet, even if you don't care about it, pass it on anyway. We just need to pass it on. <laughs> just pass it on because that's the way things work out here in this these digital streets. You know, if people get that news, we just want, we want this to go viral. You know, let people know that this is what's going on. Uh, anyway, also too, even more so, more specifically, we'd like you to introduce us to to the com you know your community, your circle, your your circles of influence. You know, introduce us to your your church, your fraternity, your sorority leaders, um, and you can do that directly by sending that sending our information, sending our link. You know, the the ten k project com. Send it to um, send your people that link, and then also email us with that information those specific uh, community leaders and such uh, to info at the 10k project.com. Um, that email comes directly to our uh, CEO, Sheree Warwick, and she gets that information and our team will follow up on that information. And we thank you in advance for sending us those folks. Cause like uh, Tawana was saying, we have been, we've met some tremendous partners or potential partners and just about everybody who's been a potential has be, has expressed interest in being an absolute you know uh, partner so thank you for that out there you know or anybody that you can share uh, this with um, anybody else want to say anything that really comes it to me like there's a question in the chat oh, sorry sorry I don't see the questions yes the question it actually comes from our Facebook group it looks like Kiara is asking do any of us have um, VC experience? So, yeah, like I needed to clarify if you meant like, oh, we are VCs or <laughs> that we had businesses because some of us are actually entrepreneurs. I started my entrepreneur journey in uh, 2015. So we can talk about that. So I just don't know how, which, which part of the question, but you can answer that, I guess, because Ms. Tawana, you've been doing a lot of uh, crowd funding <laughs> recently. Yeah, so from, so from a, so, so when you think about a, a, a traditional venture capitalist. So VC is venture capitalist, right? right? When you think of a traditional VC, I would say that the answer to that question is no. I am I am not a VC, nor do I have VC experience. I have been crowdfunding, uh, equity crowdfunding for quite a while. I actually started with the Kickstarter and Indiegogos even before most people knew what they were. When And that was where you just get the product, right? Yeah. And then when I learned about equity crowdfunding, it was like, oh, this is a no brainer, right? Of of course I want ownership in the company versus just getting the item. Um, and, and it'd be nice to get both, right? The item and, and ownership in it. Um, but one of the things, Kiera, one of the things that I think is important to know is even without, you know, with the way we're building this, even with us maybe not having that direct venture capitalist experience, um, we have access to people who are, right? And we're talking to those people and those people will be part of the, the webinars that we bring to the membership body for information. We've got a gentleman who's going to go over wealth plans um, later this month, I believe the 29th, I think is the date. Mm -hmm. And then on the 30th, we've got the, the family that has been doing the family banks. And we've got a lineup of, you know, VCs on our list that, you know, we, we've got our wish list of people we want to bring to you guys. And I don't even know that we can call it a wish list much longer because we keep getting the guests that wishes, we, yeah. like, we keep hitting it, you know, like, it, like it's not, it's not impossible. With these right, names. it sure isn't. Um, and we've yeah. got some, some true venture capitalists who do that for a living day in and day out. Um, mm. And some actual, some, some black VCs right. we've got on this list that we want to bring to you. So, you know, while we don't have the experience directly, we know what we don't have and we know what the community needs. And so our job is to bring those people to this community so that we can all benefit from the knowledge that they can give us. Let me so add to that. I hope that answered your question. Oh. Yeah. And let me add to that too, in terms of us, when, well, like just to add on to what you were saying about us knowing what the community need, needs, it's not because we're so smart. We actually, because I don't know how early you came in to this process, but um, we have actually polled our community to find out what it is the needs are. So we started with that as our foundation. And certainly like to want to mention, uh, I too am a uh, everyday VC, you know, <laughs> having the opportunity to um, actually do equity crowdfunding. And as you mentioned, just likewise, just like Tawana, I've done the um, donation 
uh, crowdfunding and uh, that kind of thing where I got some really cool stuff, you know, that it, that it, it excited me to have been uh, the first person to get this, it was a cup. And maybe you guys have seen that I won't just give their stuff. I guess they're out in the streets now, but anyway, it's a cup that, that doesn't move. I'm a total techie type person. I'm always <laughs> on my computer and it's a cup that you can bump and everything that does not fall over. Ooh. And, um, you can Pretty stick cool. it, ver you can stick it like vertically on the wall. It is, and it's, it doesn't leak. And I was like, it's just awesome. It's so awesome. I was like, oh uh, yeah, I want to put my money down on that. But, and I did, but, and got a cup, you know, but then it was cool to see it when it was marketed there at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, and now they're coming out with, you know, the cups that you can uh, customize and all that stuff. But how cool is that? Had I had equity crowdfunding in that, you know, I was like, hey, you know, look at them. they're everywhere. You know, I know by the time I saw it being sold at Walmart, you know, where they totally undercut your, you know, price of the, you know, by volume sales, but still, I would have been part of that, you know. So, Instead of it just being a nice thing, I'm ready to get paid behind it. <laughs> so, and, and it's been a, it's that's been that's been years ago. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me let me say that too. That's been years ago when I got that first cup, and it was just an idea when the guys did their their you know promo or whatever. And I was like, oh my god, I want that. You know, that was years ago, and um, now they're. It's, they're doing well. They're doing super well. Got some. And I'll take it from the opposite side. So mm -hmm. I have a startup business. So I have to pitch to VCs quite frequently. <laughs> I have to engage with them on a whole other level. So that information is brought to how we kind of formulate what we're doing. Because I have that firsthand experience, which a lot of people are like, well, how do you do it? That's the whole question. You want to know how to do it. And it's, it's a varied process. It's not the same each and every time. How do you find the people? How do you even look for those people to even contact with at this point? Now, now they're coming to us in droves, but really how accessible are they truly? And what are they looking for? So we incorporate not only the purview of the, of the standard, but we also add our own unique aspects to it to make it rich and vibrant for you that it's also culturally relevant to you. So the experience that you're getting here is not just like the standard cookie cutter. This is what you do to pitch because you can find that on the internet all day. If you just type in, I need to talk to a VC, what do I do? That's not really going to help you. But if you had a person that you could come to directly and say, okay, I need help with this. How do I engage that? And that's a part of the community that I think is another kind of value add. Even if you've never really thought about something to do, you have now exposure to entrepreneurs. And maybe that's your trigger. Maybe that's to say, hey, I thought about that. How, how did you do that? Because that's what it takes. When, like I said, I started my business in 2015, I had absolutely no one to go to. I was doing something that hadn't been done yet. And it was very challenging even to find just a resource to say, okay, what things do I need? How, how will I go about doing this? And it took a lot of what I consider tests and fails mm. to get it. But again, I could move quickly because it was just me as a solopreneur. But sometimes it's just having accessibility to somebody and say, hey, I have a question and I need you to answer. And I need you to tell me as a black female, I need another black female to tell me, what do I do? I'm, I'm uh, launching a tech product but I got to talk to these people. What do they want? And I need somebody to come directly at me and say, girl, this is what you need to do. <laughs> and that's much better. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's a value add that can't, uh, you know, that's kind of priceless at this point. And the other thing uh, to Kiara's question, I love, I love the Kiara access question. Yeah, that was a great question. Yeah. Conversations was a great a lot question. of legs. So, you know, when I think of VCs, I think of them managing funds, right? And how they are critical and essential to managing a fund. That's not this, right? So with crowdfunding, you are the VC, right? Mm -hmm. Each individual investor. So what happens is, you know, we vet the entrepreneur, you know, they come onto the platform and they pitch to the community, right? They pitch their business idea, be it a service, a model, whatever, product, whatever it is, they pitch. You sitting at home with your family around you get to decide if this business is a business you want to personally invest in, right? Does it match your portfolio requirements that you've already set for your family? Does it, does it do something to you to make you think you wanna investigate or research a little more? Like, like this is a good idea or mm, I don't know, let me ask a few more questions, right? You're doing all of that from the comfort of your home or your office or where it is you're watching the pitch from, right? And so, 
you don't necessarily need a VC to help with something like that. You are do you're you're the VC. You know, you're, this is the home of the everyday VC. That's all of us, right? And so, um, you know, you we don't need that skill set in this model because crowdfunding is to some extent an individual. Um, individual, you know, kind of game that you're playing. Um, what we do is we, we're, the, we're the intermediary, right? So we're the platform or the portal upon which the business can come and pitch to you. And you can be exposed to the business via our uh, portal mechanism. And so that's where we all come in, right? Um, again, there's some due diligence that we're going to be doing. And trust me, we're, we're talking to a VC. <laughs> we're talking to a VC. When, when we talk about due diligence, we've got a wonderful partnership with, a, with an amazing woman who is walking us through that process and sharing, you know, information with us so that we can do that due diligence above and beyond what the SEC is, is requiring. And so, um, I just want everyone to understand that as well. This is different than managing a fund. This is equity crowdfunding. And we have one more question from Antoine. Uh, he wants to know what Eric does for the company. So share Eric. Oh yes, I am chief business development officer. And for me, I'm looking for those great business ideas that the community itself would generate. And then taking those ideas and really working with the entrepreneur uh, directly to make sure that, you know, their pitch is really refined and that they have everything that they need to go in and completely file and get themselves up to speed with the SEC and everything that's required there so they, they can uh, enter into the platform and then they can go and they can present themselves to the wider community. So um, that's myself, you know, really to go out and to fish and to look for those great ideas and to really bring them in. And one thing I do, I like, like I do want to say, just kind of to kind of just join it into what uh, Dr. Keisha Tawana and Talisha just said, you know, uh, I like when, when there's an idea or there's a product or a service, I get very passionate about it. I mean, the, the group knows I will, if there's a book or something like that, I will say, hey, y'all need to read this. <laughs> like I will say it over and over again. Got it. <laughs> They say, okay, okay, what's the link? Okay, good. <laughs> and let me just say why that's important because, you know, my background is in music publishing. And let me just say, there's, there's two sides of this. There is absolutely the analytical side in which you go and you, you analyze um, an idea from a business side, um, look at all the analytics, make sure everything lines up. But there's also an instinct side too. And that both of them merge together. And I think for many of us, like we're going to see ideas that, you know what, that thing just resonates with you. You look at the product and you say, you know what, I would like, like Dr. Q just talking about the cup. I would like to have that right now. If I had that right now, I would utilize that in my life, you know, and then if I'm going to utilize it, guess what? I'm probably going to be somewhat of an advocate and talk to other people about it. So these are the sort of, sort of the things too that I want to say um, from the platform, from the portal we'll begin to see those things. And you as an investor will say, hey, you know what? I love that. Man, I would use that right now. And you know what? And if it's something that's connecting with you that deeply, how, like, like how much better is it for you to be able to actually lend your money, to put your money in and actually see that business scale up and to become really successful? So now you're not only a user of the product and service also, but now you're benefiting directly from from the business from the business itself so eric that's a great point and that's something that we didn't talk about so there's two things we haven't talked about yet i know we got 15 minutes so i want to be respectful of everyone's time but the two things we haven't talked about yet is the fact that you know as an as an investor community right helping these entrepreneurs get the funding that they so desperately need it doesn't stop there right we also need to be consumers of the products and the services that those entrepreneurs have, that those black entrepreneurs have, right? This is a, this is a community where we fund black businesses, right? So as investors, we are also consumers. And if we want to see these businesses grow, they need customers, right? And so we do need to be talking about them out into the world and we need to be supporting them as a community so that they can be successful enough to then do what? 
hire more black people, right? right? And so you, if you can see what we envision with this, right? Is that it becomes this 360 approach to uplifting us as a community, right? This is, this is, while it is, it is under the guise of just investing and raising money, there's a bigger plan here for the black community. And we just need for you to see it, right? It's, it's, it's the ability for us to truly, to truly help ourselves and not have to depend on anyone else to do the things for this community financially that we need. We have the ability to do those things for ourselves. The other thing is that we haven't talked about yet is the support after funding. So um, let's say a business comes on the platform, they pitch, and, and, and a business determines how much money they need. So the minimum that they can raise is 10,000. That's a minimum we've set for the platform. But because every business, you know, Dr. Keisha showed the slide where the SEC today says you can raise up to $1,070,000, excuse me. Um, everybody doesn't need a million dollars, right? Some people may just need 50,000 or 100,000 or 300,000 to get the manufacturing plant, right? And so um, once the money is raised, right? Then we provide the support. So business support um, that the company may need uh, before, during, and after funding, right? So if they're needing an accountant, we'll have a community of professionals that are going to be available to them to be able to utilize. If they're coming into our ecosystem for the first time and they think that crowdfunding's for them, they don't have a business plan yet. There'll be, a, there'll be business plan writers in this community that can step in and say, hey, what do, what do you need? You know, I, I, I can assist you. Um, attorneys, if they need that, all of the, the, the areas that a business um, needs the support in, we're going to have those professionals in our network waiting to assist these entrepreneurs. Because what happens is a lot of times they don't know where to go or who to call, right? I need an accountant, but I don't, I don't know an accountant. I don't know. You hear so such horror stories about accountants. How do I know that the person's trustworthy and you know, how do I know that they have the credentials? And maybe I don't need a CPA. Maybe I just need a bookkeeper. How do I know that? What I need? And so that kind of support will be a part of this as well. So just to summarize, the investor gets the education and the opportunity to invest early in a deal. The entrepreneur gets education, a platform upon which they can um, promote their product and or service to us to invest in, and they get that support after, during, and before the fundraise, depending on what, what stage of business they're in and what they need, they get that support, right? And all of that happens under this umbrella of the 10K project. Oh, you're on mute, Dr. Keisha. <laughs> oh, sorry. They also get the community. You know, we bring the community, the community of willing, individuals looking to invest black okay we talked about supporting black which we know we do we, we, we will buy some stuff no question but here's an opportunity to invest black all in one spot one stop shopping so that is tremendous that's huge as a matter of fact that's like our one of our unique selling points you know when you're that um startup company and you're looking for funding from our folks so it's a two two-fold thing you know you got us supporting, you know, so that fits that whole narr narrative of, you know, buying back, investing back, you know, and building black, basically, you know, so it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. You got about nine minutes, guys, and in final words. I just want to have one, this one thing I want to say, Go you right know, ahead, Eric. especially when we talk about, you know, black. listen, Black Wall Street was deliberate. It was deliberate and it was, it was intentional. If you ever go back and you look at it from the origin, it was not something that just sort of just kind of happenstance and just sort of just came together. No, it was deliberate intention. You look at those two men who who went and you know founded it and, and bought the land and how they constructed it. They knew what they were doing from the very beginning. And, and deliberate intentional focus is one of the most powerful forces um, that we can have when it comes down to moving and creating change. 
So that's what the 10K project, that's what the portal is about. This is deliberate. This is a, a deliberate intentional thing that we're doing here. This isn't some um, sort of thing that's kind of just maybe kind of coming to let her know. Like this is uh, Dr. Keisha, like Tawana, like Felicia said, this is exactly where we're headed to. And, and uh, we'd love to have you all become a part of it. Absolutely. I'll just say that, um, you know, we, we want you to join this mission with us. We, we would be so happy if you could, and if you could tell people that you know, but if you decide this is not for you, I just ask personally that you do something, right? Help a black business in your own way. Help a black entrepreneur. You know, if you know a family or friend who has a great idea and they haven't done anything with it, encourage them to do something, to take a chance on themselves, right? This project may not be for you and that's okay. But like I said, there's a bigger goal here for this community. And at the end of the day, I just want to see our people make it, right? Make it out of poverty for those of us who are in it, make it out of financial depression, right? That, that are, that make it out of depression because of financial situations. Like I just want our people to win. And 10K Project is just one way they can win. But there are other amazing Black businesses out there where they have similar missions and they're helping the community. And I just ask you to do something, please. Don't sit in the sidelines. Help our people. Absolutely. I want to add to that by saying, particularly, I want, like you mentioned, you know, do something. Let the biggest change be that we really, really can affect our economic um, agenda. But we can. We absolutely can in a in a for us bias way um, that really gets into as we talked about. We we close the the circle because once you you know do well yourself, it's not about just yourself. You know, this is a real community effort that, that goes beyond just your family's wealth, but the community. And, and that's what we'll be preaching here. And that will be the renewing of the mind that you'll get in this community. You know, it won't be just, you know, get your money, throw it up, you know, now you're, you're rich kind of thing, you know, and that's even over the time, you know, the 10 years, the 20 years, whatever. Um, we still, still 20 years later, the, the full circle um, mission is what we're looking to, to accomplish here. Um, so again, you know, the 10 K project.com <laughs> go there, you know, if you still are need time to take in, uh, what it is we're doing, there's an ebook there for you to, uh, sign up for and, and learn more with, you know, and talk with your significant others or whomever else you respect and trust, you know, take time with that. Um, you know, the, the FAQs are there, other ones beyond the few that we spoke about today. Um, there's information on each of the uh, founders here, as well as our uh, CEO who's not present today. Um, you know, they're, they're, and then of course there's the button to join. <laughs> so be sure to, cause I'm sure after you go through all of that, you'll be like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I gotta be a part of this. So join, share, you know, like, follow us. Thanks in advance. <laughs> Anybody else? Five minutes. I would say that last thing I would say with regard to the project is there's a lot of people we're going through a significant historical change um, at this time. So the year 2020 is undoubtedly going to be a historic time frame. So as we're living through it, I know it's difficult to hold on to something because everything is different. <laughs> but this is the first time that you get to craft your own destiny. So you could take this full advantage of, you know what, everything is not the way it's supposed to be, but you get to direct your attention to how you would like it. And I think that's, that is something that we rarely get to do in this stage of, you know, being dictated to how these things come together and truly being left out of the process most of the time. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not going to, you know, instantly change the world and be 2021, be this glamorous place. But at the time that you do have to set a foundation for yourself, set your foundation with the things that matter. These are the pillars of your community is, is financial literacy and empowerment. Those are going to change directly how you live in this world. And this is the time that you can do it. And what better place to do it than within the community among yourself for yourself. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. That was a perfect way to end. I know, right? <laughs> so I don't know if you guys checking around any other final questions. That was it, honey. So this is economic empowerment. Thank you. You thank you for coming and joining us. Yes, thank you, absolutely. honey. Hey, honey. All right, all right guys. That, that's why that's we my got... realtor. Oh, hey, honey. Thank you. <laughs> you need a great realtor, honey. Abrams, call there her. You go. Oh, there you go. Somebody got a shout, shout out. out, honey. Shout out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you have any further questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you're watching the replay, just tag um, hashtag replay, and we'll get to the the questions as they come in. I'll be sure to make sure I get to every question that you have. All right. You heard it first. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>